O come, let us worship God, and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> God said, let the water team with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth, <clears throat> let the birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teams, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the waters of the seas. Let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, <clears throat> and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was, and then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image, in the divine image he created him, male and female he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all, all over the earth, and every tree that has, <clears throat> that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. To all the animals of the land, all the birds of the sea, and all the living creatures that crawl upon the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything that he had made and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work that he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had undertaken. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Such is the story of the heavens and the earth at their creation. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> o Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, 
When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You have made him less than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. <clears throat> you have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the sea. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Incline my heart, O God, to your decrees, and favor me with your law. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He went on to say, How well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to uphold your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father or mother shall die. Yet you say, If someone says to father or mother, Any support you might have had from me is korban, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition that you have handed on, and you do many such things. The Gospel of the Lord. What might some of those traditions that are simply merely human be in our lives that perhaps we have upheld uh, as something to be clung to, something um, that we have gotten to be experts in setting aside the commandment of God in order to uphold our tradition? I certainly hope that one of those things doesn't become, you know, the, the live stream, um, you know, which I'm afraid that people have taken um, the live stream masses as somehow considered a substitute or equal to the mass, that you can either come in person or you can watch it on the live stream. It's not quite that way. We see that the Lord God um, in the the God who is the creator of all in the creation story is presented as resting on the seventh day and making it holy. 
And in the book of Exodus, the Lord God then commanded to Moses and to all the people and to us, those commandments we still keep to this day, the Ten Commandments, which are rooted in the natural law. And that third commandment, to remember to keep holy the Lord's day. And the church has given us the way to do that through Sunday Mass. And yet, if we feel in our own um, personal decision that it really doesn't matter how we uh, worship God, that we can go to Mass because that's a good thing, or we could just, you know, go for a walk and think about God and pray um, on a Sunday, or that we could just, you know, stay at home and read scriptures, and that all those things are equal, that would be setting our own human traditions above what the Lord has taught us through his church. Um, that's if we otherwise, you know, were to set aside um, everything in the Gospels where the Lord gives the church the authority to speak to us in his name. And so that's maybe one example of human traditions, not so much the live stream mass, but this idea that, um, that um, we can decide for ourselves what it means to keep holy the Lord's day, and that um, perhaps if our tradition is to do less than holy things on the Lord's day, um, maybe we put off all our chores till Sunday, or we put off all our, um, all our other, any kind of work, um, maybe even we um, put, put off our, our regular day job work um, till Sunday. If we're not part of, you know, something necessary for society, if we, we can look this up in the catechism, they explain what it means to do unnecessary servile work on a Sunday. But people make that habitual. We make that habitual sometimes and get used to it, and that's sort of become our tradition. It's not, it's, it's replacing the commandment of God. You know, in our modern culture, time is money. And so it would be a shame in our modern um, work ethic, it would be a shame to waste an entire day. Well, God wants uh, to be worthy, or God is worthy of wasting time on him. And our families are worthy waste of, of, being, of having time wasted on them. Um, our prayer life is worthy of our attention at least one day of the week. There are plenty of other ways in which um, we build these human traditions, you know, that um, disregard God's commandment. Certainly, the sort of cult of sports, whether it's in um, making excuses when we go to bring our kids to sports, or whether it's making excuses when we want to watch sports uh, on TV, and making that an excuse that, well, we couldn't go to Mass. Well, that's silly. You can always find a way to go to Mass um, if, you are, um, if you are healthy enough to go to, to a sporting event, then you are healthy enough and um, you are sophisticated enough to go on the internet and look up masstimes.org and find, you know, a 7 a.m. Mass or, or a noon Mass at a local parish in the foreign town to which you have traveled. There, is, there, are, there, are, there are ways to find Mass. Um, you can go to, on the vigil. That's what the vigil is for, for people who are traveling on the Sunday. And so we get so used to, we get so used to our human traditions and we cling to them. And we make them more important than God's commandments. That's just one example of the ways. But there are pl plenty of other examples that have nothing to do with keeping holy the Lord's day. Maybe the other commandment of God that we are neglecting is, um, to, is not to bear false witness against our neighbor. But maybe we have some human tradition, um, some, some sort of gathering of friends that whenever we get together, um, we know we're going to be bashing this group or tearing down this lady or this guy or whatever. And, um, and if we're not aware of that, we just keep doing that, you know, um, that would be really a shame. If we become aware of that and take action to change that, then that puts God's commandment above our human Traditions, Maybe our human tradition that we cling to uh, above God's commandments, um, you know, could, could have to do with 
um, you know, us deciding that it doesn't really matter to keep the sacrifices. The church has the very, 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 very minimal sacrifices that the church has um, given us to make during Lent um, of abstaining from meat on Fridays and of fasting um, on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Very, very minimal. I mean, compared to what it was before or compared to what Muslims do nowadays um, to other religions, we are very, you know, it's like abstaining from meat. All you got to do is go get an Impossible Whopper at Burger King because that's not made out of meat. <laughs> or, you know, plenty, all the fish options that are out there, you know. I mean, we live in Seafood Central, so, you know, it's so easy to keep that. But we decide on our own personal um, authority that that, oh, you know what, I'm just going to eat this, I'm just going to break this um, commandment because, I don't know, maybe maybe it's been your tradition to go get a steak with your friends um, every so often and, and that happens to fall on a Friday in Lent and you don't want to break the tradition. Well, I think once we can keep the commandment of God. Maybe the tradition of men that we cling to, um, well, it's... It's lost my mind, so I'll wrap up the homily. <laughs> but anyway, there's, there's so many you can think of if you examine your conscience and think of the ways in which you um, personally might be holding on to some personal um, uh, human tradition that conflicts, but that we don't want to let go of. It conflicts with the commandments of God. May God give us the strength to do that, um, to not be hypocrites. Um, but to be people whose beliefs and whose faith in God matches our actions. Let's now stand and bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church throughout the world, um, especially in places where she is persecuted, uh, that she may be given an outpouring of a strength of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have asked for our prayers, those who are sick or suffering, those who are oppressed, uh, those who are um, bound by sin or by other, um, other restrictions of their, of their freedom, and for all um, who suffer from addictions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all those who serve the sick or serve um, the needy, those who serve the homeless, uh, and that they may receive the reward of their labors from the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all those who are struggling with, um, with making a moral decision in their lives, that they may be given clarity uh, from the Lord and from the Holy Spirit and strength to do what is right. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing that we are weak and that we need your help and your saving. And so come to us now powerfully, heal us, strengthen us, and grant the answer to our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion is upon. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things.
Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And how revere this wondrous gift, so far surpassing hope, or thought, sweet sacrament we thee adore, O make us love thee more and more, O make us love thee more and more. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In case you're watching on the live stream and wondering whether you're watching is wrong or not, it's not, um, because I was talking about the Lord's Day, and if someone is sick or homebound, of course they are not bound to be present here at Mass on the Lord's Day. Just a clarification, so people don't start commenting in the live stream. I can't see the comments, but I can feel them. And so, uh, you know, if you are sick or homebound, or if you are caring for someone who is sick or homebound, of course you're not obliged to be here at Mass on Sunday, or vigil. But if you are anyone, of course you're not obliged to be here on a weekday, unless it's a holy day of obligation. So anyone watching the live stream because you woke up late, you know, that's fair, right? But now you, you know why, it's because you woke up late. But, <laughs> but, uh, but I just want to clarify because people sometimes um, will take something that's, that they did nothing wrong and they hear something and feel worried about whether or not it's talking about them. Um, so I think we all, in our own hearts, know the ways in which we put certain traditions of ourselves in front of God, uh, and we have to examine what those are, and maybe it's not the ones I described or um, portrayed. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Prayer for vocations. Lord Jesus Christ, who took to yourself a body and soul like ours, to teach us the glory of self-sacrifice and service. Mercifully instill in our hearts the desire to dedicate our lives to you. Give us priests and deacons to stand at the altar and speak the words of the gospel. Brothers and sisters, to teach the young, next to sick, and minister charity to all. Lay people to imitate you in their hearts, families, work, and community. Amen.